Good morning, everybody. Sarasota Tim coming to you from a cold. Yeah, it's cold. What is it? It is 42 degrees here at my daughter's house in Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm on my way to McDonald's, not just for Tammy, uh, but uh, Christina wants some hot cakes this morning, hot cakes and sausage. <clears throat> and Tammy does not want a Coke. She has some here, I guess. Oh my gosh. Let me turn this heat, heated seat on. Woo! I don't know why I started the video this early. I just fired it up, the crusher. I got my steering wheel knob on here. I would not be without it. I love that thing. And uh, I got this Lexus motor in here, this V8, this bad boy. You know, I only got a, a camper that weighs uh, 4,000 pounds loaded. I think it's only 3,200 empty. I can tow 10,000 pounds with this truck. I was talking to Eddie yesterday, my son-in-law, and I said, if you got a bigger camper, how big would you go? Because you really don't want to get... Uh, anything too big even if you could tow the biggest thing out there because you can't go anywhere with them uh, a lot of campgrounds unless they have a pull through site and you know I can back mine up into a tent site uh, but I would like to have something bigger if I really wanted another camper you know with a slide out and everything so we were just spitballing you know talking and he said he'd, he'd probably want to go with something about 6,500 pounds and the way they make them these days with light material, I know that as far as length goes, uh, if you're if you're an RV person, you know what I'm talking about. You'd want to go with something that's under 30 feet on the outside, probably around 28 on the outside. That would probably be around 25 foot on the inside, because when you get to 30 feet, is like the maximum to. Uh, to get into these uh, back end sites. Otherwise you need a pull through. And if they're sold out of those, you don't have anywhere to go. And they're just an albatross. I, I don't think that I would enjoy towing uh, some big old long thing. Although in the beginning, when I first started looking at campers and trailers, I thought, man, look at that big old triple axle, fifth wheel, nice, and they are. What would be great about one of those is to buy it have somebody move it on a place and leave it there and live in it. You know, that would be the, I don't want to drag one around though. But when I look at my wolf pup now in comparison to almost, where's my sunglasses? Ooh, gosh, it's cold. Ooh. Uh, in comparison to almost any other camper, it's, it's tiny and without that slide it's really it's not practical other than doing some fun weekend camping with Tammy and I it's not a it's not a long term <laughs> deal so I don't know I'm not gonna probably buy one but uh, now I got more you know truck that I've been blessed to have uh, that could pull quite a bit more than I have is comforting or intriguing to know that I could. Now, on to another topic. We are going to Blue Ridge today at 4 o'clock is check-in for the whole week, our finale, at Hidden Creek Cabin, a four-bedroom, luxurious gated community, uh, smart cabin, just like the chalet we were in, uh, that Tom owns, Tom and Joan. Uh, this is Steve and Kathy and they're subscribers and they like the, uh, the reviews and the videos of the real reality of someone being in it, uh, that, you know, doesn't mind talking in front of a camera and you guys know I'm not shy. And he would like to share 
his uh, Airbnb cabin with the world and would like me, Sarasota Tim, uh, to do that. And so it's a win-win and I'm very honored and we're very excited about it. So uh, the little key code that we have uh, will be active at 4 p.m. That's the check-in. And we'll be there through Friday at 10 a.m. That's the check-out. And then we'll be back here in Dawsonville at my daughter's where the wolf pup is. And we'll either spend another day or two uh, visiting because it'll be a weekend and they'll be off. And I'll get that quality family time. Oh, the seat's warming up nicely. And then it's back to sunny South Florida uh, to Boynton Beach. Here comes a tundra going to pass me. Yeah, on a narrow road. And where we go from there, <clears throat> I don't know. What our future is from there, I don't know. Uh, but we are in a transition. But I'm very, very, very excited about what's been going on in my life. Um, you know, folks, it got very exciting when the, uh, when the transition happened from Sarasota uh, over to Palm Beach and I bought the Wolf Pub. And I'm going to turn this, seat, this heater seated off. Heater seated off now. I'm turning it off because it's burning me up. The automatic climate control air conditioning hasn't kicked on yet because the thermostat hasn't gotten the, uh, the heat going yet. But it's going to kick on, I think. I got it on automatic. There it is. Uh, when I moved from Sarasota to Palm Beach County, got the wolf pup, they raised our rent, beginning at the end of the pandemic thing and all that. It was a very confusing time. And I was very blessed to have an opportunity to go where I'm at now and will continue to be at until further notice. Florida is going to be the envy of the United States here in a few months when you guys, you guys, or whoever's not in Florida, are freezing or in snow, and we're down there on the beach. Uh, so, again, life is, is really good. I'm happy. Uh, but the, uh, the fact that I don't have enough space is an issue. And the fact that how the world has changed to all these new numbers that are just very difficult for a lot of us, you know, that are on limited incomes. But there's going to be, there, something will happen. Something will happen. And something has to happen. But I can't let uh, the way things are continue uh, with two people in this little box. <laughs> our pay grades are above it and our needs are above it. And you're going to do what you have to do. But we'll also stay with what we're doing because we don't have any other options at this moment. But they don't just fall out of the sky. You got to look for them. You got to pray about them. You got to search for them. You got to plan for them and you got to pay for them. And all those boxes can be checked. It's just a matter of beginning. How are you going to begin your day today uh, that don't have those dilemmas, but you have other things that you want to do? You want to begin an exercise program. Are you purging those closets? Are you getting rid of those things in that garage to make more room? Are you cleaning up your yard? Are you being nice today? Oh, I was going to say this, talking about being nice. I mean, we can all be nice. I could be nicer. You know how they create these new holidays that you never heard of in your life? They're on your phone. You can look at these calendar, these calendar holidays. What if it was a common thing that it was a be nice day, you know, to check yourself in traffic and in stores and in line and with your spouses and your children and your friends and not to gossip and to be friendly and to go out of your way to actually be kind. Do you know, I'm onto something here. If they made that a holiday and that was promoted, 
by the powers that be and people heard about it that um, and it became something that people it would grow so quickly it really would and especially the next time it came around maybe it should be twice a year <laughs> or one day a month <laughs> just think how our, our country could change our world can change when people just put the effort out to being a little more patient you know a little less gossipy a little less judgmental and be a little nicer I mean I I would love to say that, that like everybody was aware of that and it happened today and I was gonna go out and I was gonna see people you know how it is on Christmas and everybody said oh Merry Christmas you know <laughs> because it's Christmas morning that kind of a thing I'm on to something here there should be we need it we need it there's too much not nicety going on especially when people get behind the wheel of their car people need to start checking themselves all of us and so anyway we can we can talk about that in comments <laughs> what do you guys think should, should they make a holiday i mean we're being we have to be forced to be nice but it might work so i'm going to go into mcdonald's here and get the girls their things uh, i'm going to pull my app up on the phone and maybe we'll chat some more on the way back but i've been reading the comments i know you enjoyed the pies and the and the uh, the walking and the beauty and this and that and i haven't answered everything and you live around here about avalon i've read all the comments folks thank you so much for leaving those i saw those subscribers jump up maybe a lot of you were unsubscribed and and it, and it bumped back up. That's very encouraging for me when I see the subscribers going up. All right, McDonald's uh, cut me off on my video because it it uh, connected to the Wi-Fi because it remembered that I uh, signed into it. All right, everybody, I'm back. So I went from McDonald's and in the crusher there talking to you to finishing the video like this because I was just yammering about nothing. Uh, I'm going down the road on my uh, daughter's street here and the bridge that they have has been out for some time. You can go out of this place two ways, and now there's only one because they're putting in some kind of water pipe, plumbing, something. We're gonna go down here and find out. And uh, it is cold, especially in these trees. Very chilly this morning. My toes are cold. Yes, I got pants and shoes on. I'm not stupid. When it gets so cold, I'll find some. I got a jacket on too. And uh, and it's not the the appropriate jacket. I could go for something heavier. It's that cold. I feel cold anyway. But in the sunlight, it's probably gonna be nicer. Anyway, let me get down here to the bridge and I'll show you. You can hear all the noise in the background. And down in the holler here, there's a an area you can actually rent this area I'm looking down there now let me just turn the camera around and show you what i'm talking about okay so i'm right here on the uh on the road and that's the way you can't go anymore you have to go the other way but you see down here look at these cactus watch out tim look down there i'm gonna walk over the bridge you can see it better I think the person that owns this property over here owns like all this area and back that way. And what they've done is down below the bridge here, you can see there's water right there. Look over here. This is kind of interesting. Look what they've created. Oh my, it's even gotten bigger and better. Look at all that over there. You can rent this area and hang out. I saw a bunch of cars parked right over there. Let's see if I can get a little closer shot.
then over here and then over here looks like it's kind of cleared out down in there too <clears throat> sheer wall right over there let me walk across the bridge speaking of bridges you see that one down there that wood plank uh, bridge see that little tractor and that wall face they're constantly down there moving rock around and creating a natural but yet place you can habitat inhabit can habitat it. <laughs> Let's see what we got up here. Oh my gosh, is it cold. Let me back out one more for you. He's got these old cars up there. An old Camaro up the road there. Got all these little old things, but this is being completely changed. This road, oh yeah. I wonder if they're gonna throw me out of here. Look what they're doing. I hope they don't throw me out. Oh yeah, if I walked up there, I'd know they'd throw me out. Nothing but hard rock. And where they're going with it, they got these pipes over here. see if I can get on top of one of these rocks here and just get a little better view if I can crawl walk up here uh, there's his place down there and that little bridge there's the waterfall Let me get over here where this uh, excavator is. I'll make, them, I'll make them throw me out. Digging up rock, putting it on that truck. This used to be the road that goes out to the main road. And it was this high. And now look at how deep they've gone down and they're cutting through what man's able to do with their machines. And, and down here is the view of the the waterfall and the place you can rent. All the tables are back over in there. The camera's trying to focus on the nearest thing. That's a heavy rock, isn't it?
very slow and go. Got him a good load right there. I'm thinking that's going to be a very slow process to dig one bucket full at a time out of all of that rock. They, you know, they they blew this up. Uh, they've done something. They didn't just dig it. I heard they blew it up, and I guess it was kind of Georgia clay there. And now they're into this rock. They're just trying to clean out all they can. I don't know where they're going with it, what's it about. But anyway, the main road, a paved road, you go down here and come back around a little bit, maybe a quarter mile, if that. And this was always a dirt road that you could come uh, from this way or back the other way where I showed you. But now we're down to one way and this is gonna be blocked for quite a while it looks like I mean look at these few rocks he's put in here and he has to uh, work within the narrow area there of this machine they can't get a big front end loader in there, maybe. I don't know. But there they go, chipping away all day. Easy as you go. Let's get ourselves on out of here. Let me show the uh, waterfall over here. Maybe I can get a better view of it. There it is there. There's his mailbox. Let me go over here. There's the uh, area. I'm sure it's really cool down there. I believe there's a way to go down there. I shouldn't go down there because it's private property. I won't go down there. But I think uh, we saw a bunch of cars parked because he must have rented it out, my daughter said, on the weekend. There were cars parked all around, you know, where you can't come across this bridge anyway. They were down in here and they were also on the road right there, my daughter's road. That's the waterfall right here. So if you wanted to come on the road, you would have a, a difficult time turning on her road because of all the cars that were parked there. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that little, uh, I, I have a, a channel that I watch, Andrew Camaretta. 
He's got millions of subscribers. He does home improvements, lives upstate New York. He built a home out of shipping containers and he owns every kind of heavy equipment you can imagine. And they're all junks, but they all work. And one of the, the successes and the niches that he has is he intentionally buys real old uh, heavy equipment. They break and then he fixes it, makes a video about it and eventually gets it done, does everything himself. And then of course he <laughs> gets lots of views because it's interesting to watch, but he keeps it very entertaining because he won't make you sit there and watch it. He speeds it up. Like when he's clearing a road with a front end loader or whatever, he'll show you what he's doing and it'll go on for two or three minutes. And then it's fast forward. Then he'll slow it back down and he has a couple of cool dogs. Andrew Camaretta. Check out his channel. I've been watching him for years. He's been on TV. He got so big. Well, like I say, he built a house out of shipping containers, which is not a new idea anymore. And then I guess he did so well on YouTube, he ended up buying this mountaintop, clearing it, flattening it, and putting a, uh, a camper RV, a fifth wheel actually, up there that uh, he plays uh, with the snow machines and all that in the winter time. And in the summertime, there's a lake up there and it's beautiful and they go jet skiing and, and everything. But he's always out there on some kind of heavy equipment and the dogs are always running around. They're very used to everything. Christina's property. She has this nice fence and these LED lights come on at night. They got their big firewood. Yes, I'm out of breath. This is a hill. There's a the wolf pup over there in the crusher. The sun's starting to hit. We're doing some laundry this morning. Let me turn around. Tammy's getting some laundry done. I'm going to organize the crusher in the... Uh, bed and then behind the cab and everything and get all of our clothes in there check-ins at uh four o'clock <laughs> we've all received the emails with the codes to get in to hidden creek cabin in blue ridge we're excited about it we're going to bring you some some good videos of the blue ridge area uh some restaurants some shops uh people have been telling about all these places to go we'll try to get it in plus uh, the person that is letting us stay in the cabin, uh, Mr. Steve, he has uh, already provided me a lot of information uh, that he would like me to share with you guys. So if you're interested in renting his Airbnb uh, of what you can expect to enjoy, uh, just right outside the uh, community where the uh, cabin is, uh, right there very close to the uh, Blue Ridge downtown area. So you're going to see it all. It's coming to you. But right now we're gonna get ready, get everything packed up in the crusher here. It's early still, we got time. We're only about an hour's drive to Blue Ridge from here. We do wanna get there a little early and bang around a little bit uh, before checking in. But uh, as we get there and do the walkthrough and everything, stay tuned today because we're gonna be crushing it all week.